I suppose we can go get coffee, huh? Maybe? Nah, it's just you. Hey! I get this question asked a lot, and I thought it was finally time to answer it. Today we are going over how I scan in my watercolor paintings for either reproduction or to sell the original. Now, to do this, you're gonna need access to a scanner, a fairly decent scanner, and Photoshop. What I'm gonna be scanning in today is one of my finished paintings, and I'll be showing you how I color correct things after the fact and some of the little details that I like to do when I am considering making prints of a piece. Let's head on over to my computer desk and get started. So this is a finished painting that I'll be scanning in today. Um, it has been recently finished. I have not taken the time to flatten it out. That will be later after the fact. But as you can see, I don't need it to be flat in order to scan it. So this is my Epson V600 photo scanner and I absolutely love it. It is just a nice regular photo scanner. It, what I would consider a professional quality, but it's not terribly expensive and also not like overly oversized. The scanning bed goes up to size A4, but I've scanned paintings that are much, much larger using Photoshop Photo Merge. So to get us started, I'm gonna open up my scanning program. Now, if you're using a scanner that already has a program that comes with it, you're more than welcome to use that. There's nothing special about what I'm using here. The reason I'm using it is because I wanna make sure that my whites are actually white. I'm not blowing out any of my information. When you scan in a photo, you wanna make sure that stuff is at least exposed correctly. Once you blow out the whites in a picture, you can't get the information back. So you wanna make sure that is correct and that's why I use a program like this one. Another benefit for me with using a program is I can have presets set up in it so I can just load those in and it has all of my information that I set up in the past. So the program that I'm using is one called ViewScan. Um, it was just recommended to me by a friend and I've enjoyed using it. So once I have my preferences loaded, I will preview my scan. And as you can see here on the side, I typically scan into an extremely high scan resolution. You do not need it to be this high. You can pick like uh, 1600 is actually what I recommend. I am totally fine with keeping these lot larger um, files around because I use them for various things like banners that are eight feet tall. So <laughs> I have use for them for, for the most part. Most people don't and that doesn't make any sense. Make sure you're previewing at a, a low resolution. When I save my files, I typically typically save a TIFF file and a JPEG. Again, not really necessary, but just something that I do. I am going to select my image and then hit scan. As you can see here, just from the scan image, if I were to show you the picture of what the finished artwork looks like, it's not very colorful. And that's totally fine. What I'm gonna be doing in Photoshop is a little bit of Photoshop wizardry, as I call it, and we're gonna correct that in there. So you don't have to worry too much about those colors being a little bit muted. I would be worried if they were off, like extremely off, where like if you had red and we couldn't even tell that it was red, for example. Some things to keep in mind when you are scanning is that there are colors that a scanner will just not pick up. So there's a couple of watercolor paints that I use sparingly because of this problem. Cyan, turquoise, it depends on, I guess, maybe your scanner. I don't know the, the science behind it, but the more you use your own scanner and you get used to it, the more you recognize that there are certain particular colors that don't like to scan as well. So just keep that in mind. So this next step is I have already scanned in my image and I've pulled it into Photoshop and we have a look at the file. Now, as I mentioned already, the colors aren't that great, so we're gonna fix that first. What I've already done is open up an image of my, uh, just a photo taken from my phone. I picked this image because it, it represents the colors that I'm looking for. It has all of the, the right, you know, saturation and things like that. So I'm just gonna copy that and include that in my file here. 
Next, I am just gonna crop out that actual image of feathering. that other stuff and I don't actually need that turned on what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna use this image that was taken on my camera as a reference for the image that we are editing right now so that way you can see what needs to be changed so clearly we need to deal with those greens there needs to be more saturation in the clouds uh, just more saturation overall um, I could tweak that a little bit in my scan when I'm scanning it in but in general, this works for me. Again, also helps deal with those blue colors that I typically can't scan in for whatever reason. Uh, if you're worried about your image uh, and you want it to be white balanced correctly, one thing you can do is include a white balance card when you scan in your image. Um, this will just allow you to give you just a highly accurate um, white or a neutral gray. Um, I have one in my photography stuff, but I don't typically use it when I'm scanning in just because I'm pretty happy with this method of working and I, I don't mind if it's just a little bit different. Oops. So I'm cropping the image here and that looks good. And what we're going to do next is color correct. All right, it's not perfectly cropped, but let's just try some levels. Um, I'm picking up the dry eyedropper tool to see what the white is over here. So I left a little bit on the edge. Uh, levels or curves allows you to do this. So the, the white balance, when I skin it in, is pretty good. Like, I didn't actually use a lot of whites in here. If you're working on a warm watercolor paper, um, you will notice a difference if um, you color correct your white balance to the paper because then your image will be not, it'll be more cool. So just something to be aware of and keep in mind. Next we're going to go up here to image adjustments and match color. Now match color is going to take color from a file like the one we have open and match it. So, this magic needs some tweaking, but we will get there. So I always press neutralize, and this is super saturated, so we're gonna be really careful about that. I'll fade it a little bit. Just being really careful to make sure that my image isn't overly saturated. Um, you can also toggle this on and off and you can see really easily what is brought back as far as saturation goes. To me that looks pretty good. Um, next I want to play with a little bit of the curves just to give me a little bit more contrast. This is all really hard to teach because for me it's always very, very intuitive. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting challenge to put into words what exactly I'm doing, because I've been doing it for so long. Alright, we're definitely getting there. Um, one of the things I will do, not necessarily at the end, but um, I will always make sure to go over the entire canvas with the healing brush. The uh, healing brush is just set to really soft soft round brush and uh, I'll pick out any imperfections that were picked up in the scan. Typically these are just little fibers that were on the paper. Uh, maybe it was a little bit of dust. Just little things. I do this now um, only because if I don't do it now I'll probably forget when I want to go to make a print of it and yeah those just don't look very good when you are trying to <laughs> look professional. So also they show up a lot when you blow up an image, so they're really obvious then. So that's one thing I like to make sure I eliminate early on. 
know there's some debate on whether or not you should modify your painting after you finish it and plan on making prints. And my opinion is honestly, <laughs> do whatever you want. Like, unless you are trying to sell the original, then you need to represent your original accurately online. Um, but if that isn't the case and you're just selling prints of your art and there was something about it that bugged you when you first made it and you didn't make the, you know, the adjustments then in the uh, traditional original form, there is so much room for you to just fix those things that bugged you. So I highly recommend going in and yeah, just experimenting a little bit with the colors. Um, I mean, you can go real crazy. It's Photoshop, so there's a lot of things you can do in here if you want to, to fix something. Now for me, I often, I, I try to stay fairly true to the original most of the time. I have come back in and reworked some older pieces that had already sold into something that I, I wanted to fix the scan and kind of actually change one of the figures. And that was a really old painting, so. <sighs> yeah. So this has been cleaned up just a little bit. You could, I suppose, use the dust and scratches filter, but um, I found that it sort of mutes the line work in a piece. Um, so that's why I don't like to use any sort of automated dust removal on my paintings, just because it doesn't work for me. So I don't want my lines to disappear. For me, that looks pretty good. And yeah, there you have it. There's not a lot I would um, adjust to this. I pretty much, pretty much have everything. One more thing we could do, um, if you want to bring up the vibrance, you can do that with your adjustments layer. If you want to, what do we want to do? I could use a tiny bit. Um, what I often do is adjust portions of an image. So for example, here, this is not at all accurate to the bottom of the image, but the clouds I feel like in real life are a little bit more saturated at the top. So what I've done is just to create a vibrance layer and then just use the mask to mask out most of the bottom half of the image. So that way my clouds are just a bit more saturated um, or vibrant and you can still have the, the accurate bottom portion and also where the figure's standing. Anyways, I hope this has been insightful. I highly recommend if you create artwork yourself, looking into a way of um, scanning that or reproducing it. I don't photograph my art because scanning is so easy. For me, I work on paper and it's very easy to stick in a scanner. I realize for other people, when you work on canvas or any other sort of surface, it's not as easy to scan. Also, I know with things that are just shiny, typically you need to be a little bit more careful with those. I'm happy to answer questions about my process, but for the most part, this is just meant to be more of a general overview and less of a tutorial. I highly recommend looking into taking Photoshop courses if you're not at all familiar with using Photoshop. And I, as I mentioned, you can totally do this with other programs. You don't need Photoshop. You can use GIMP, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot more out there to pick from, but this should give you a basic idea of how I get this image into a computer. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I realize that I'm covering topics that are fairly broad. Each person's gonna have a different scanner, so you're really gonna have to play around with your own settings. And of course, all of us have different versions of Photoshop. And there are other alternatives out there. I hope this gives you at least a basic idea of what I typically do. Shed some light on just a different part of the many aspects of what goes into finishing a painting. Before we go, I wanna send a special thank you, shout out to all of my patrons for making these videos possible. Without them and without you, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Head on over to patreon.com slash Naomi if you're at all curious about more behind the scenes art and other world building projects. 
Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!